Hello there. My name is Dr. Matthew Davis, and I am the Deputy Director of Education for the Coral Bell School. And it's a great pleasure that I have to welcome you all to your new studies here at the ANU. Before we commence, I would of course like to acknowledge and celebrate the traditional owners of the land from which I'm speaking to you today, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. In your time studying here, I think there are two important questions that you need to think about what your answer to them are. The first one is, why are you here? There are a range of different answers to that question, and I guess it's not my place to tell you what any particular answer is for you. Some of you may be here because you're passionate about your area of study. Some of you may be here because you don't know what else to do. Some of you may be here because you hope, believe, wish that this will help advance your career or to move you into a different type of career. All of those are equally valid reasons for your attendance here. But when I think about the types of learning and the types of courses that you are going to be taking over your time here at the Coral Bell School, I think there's also a, another question that you need to think about. And that question is, what do we want you to learn whilst you are here? Now, in one sense, it's a very easy question to answer. We want you to learn more about the subjects you are studying, whether you're doing a degree in diplomacy or political science, strategic studies or international relations. We want you to know more about these topics. But simply knowing more about these things isn't actually what we're looking for and isn't actually why we're passionate about teaching with you and learning from you. What we're actually interested in here during your time is helping you to think about what does it mean to be thoughtful, okay? Being thoughtful is one of the hardest things that you can face. And let me tell you a little bit about why. Let me tell you how it's different from being thoughtless. And let me tell you what I think the consequences of being thoughtful are. Thoughtlessness does not mean idiocy. Thoughtlessness doesn't mean you are stupid. Thoughtlessness doesn't mean you don't know a great many things. Thoughtlessness is something slightly different and something more pernicious. Thoughtlessness is an absence of curiosity. It is an unwillingness or an inability to, to look at the world and to look at yourself in that world and to ask hard questions, perhaps even questions without answers about what does it mean, how does it hang together and what is our place in it. Thoughtlessness is the refusal or the inability to grapple with complexity. And I don't simply mean complexity in the sense of there are lots of things to learn, although that is certainly part of it. I mean complexity in the sense of there are multiple truths out there between which we need to navigate. Thoughtlessness then is a quality of surety. It is a quality of being certain about what is right, about what your place or your role is in the world, about what you are seeking to do. Now, all of that sounds incredibly appealing, but why might it be wrong? Let's turn to thinking instead of what is thoughtlessness to what is thoughtfulness. What is this thing that we hope, regardless of your particular area of study, that you develop, that you engage with, and that you think about the consequences of? The first thing that it seems to me is significant is that thoughtfulness comes associated with or, or leads to a state or a characteristic of perplexity. I want you to be perplexed. Now you may be sitting there thinking well that's a ridiculous thing to want, I don't understand it and why it would be good, but let me clarify a little. Perplexity isn't simply being confused. Perplexity is when you look out in the world and you understand just how complicated it is, just how different people's lives are in that world, the, the competing number 
of arguments about what is right and what is good and what is true, that there are compelling answers, multiple compelling answers to the same question, and that it's really hard, perhaps even impossible, to choose between them in any absolute way. That perplexity emerges when you realize there are not simple answers. The second consequence of being thoughtful is, I would argue, humility. When we look into the world with through perplexed eyes, when we think about what the world is and our position in it and what we may seek to achieve, it seems to me that the, the prime ethical response is to be humble about how we as individuals approach that world how we approach the lived experiences and the knowledges of others, how we engage from our own position of privilege and education with that world, and how we think through the choices that we're going to make in terms not only of what we would like to see, but how that vision will interact with people who have equally valid accounts of what they would like to see. This is not a call for bland night. This is not a call or an argument that, that every argument is equally valuable. But it is an argument that one of the annoying things of learning more about world politics and the people who conduct and live in world politics is that simple answers simply do not exist. That what it means to think about what is good and what is right, there are meaningful variations, even if those variations are not absolute or all inclusive out there and that we need to confront and that we need to think about those things. The third thing that I think emerges from being thoughtful and from moving away from thoughtlessness is an argument about our agency. We know that we live in a world of a depressing number of complex issues. And that perhaps we feel, I will feel this in different ways and in different directions, that the world is not right. That the world is not doing what we would hope to see. Thinking through the world thoughtfully, thinking about our perplexity when we look at it, adding to that an argument about our humility as we approach it, is not the same as saying we should or we can do nothing. Indeed, the one thing this world is crying out for is that people who act in that world will have agency with humility, with bravery, and with insight. We don't have the luxury of knowing what to do. That is a fool's errand if you are here to try and get that answer. But we do have the ability through thinking about the world, thinking about what's happening and thinking about ourselves in conversation with that world, to think a little bit about what does it mean to make good and ethical choices. All of us, whether in our futures we're going to be presidents or prime ministers or academics or working in civil society, the private sector, or even in your own personal life. All of us have to and will continue to have to make choices. We will make choices in the context of incomplete information and we will make choices in the context of not knowing the answer, of weighing up the choices, weighing up these alternatives that confront us. And so when I think about why do we want you here, what do we want you to learn, what is the value add of whatever your particular degree, Yes, of course it includes learning more about your subject, learning more about how the world works, but it's more than simply knowing about more things. What is important is how you respond to that growth of information. Through becoming thoughtful as opposed to thoughtless, through recognizing hard questions with difficult answers, through viewing ourselves embedded in the world, but also having to act in that world, what we at the Bell School hope you learn during your time here is not what any particular answer may be, but how you can go through the process of trying to establish what your answers are and how you engage with others who have very different answers to the same questions. Your education then is one about what does it mean to live as an ethical, applied, aware and embedded citizen 
It is about making choices, not on a selfish basis, but in the round and acknowledging the context in which we all act. When we look at the world today, I'm pretty confident that many of us will look at it with dismay or with confusion or even with fear. What you learn here and during your time here is part of the process of vaccinating you against that fear, not through the false images of certainty, but through recognizing that it is only through complexity, humility, but also the bravery of agency that we can make some sort of valuable contribution. I wish you well in all of your studies. If you ever need anything from me, please do come and contact me and let me know how your journey goes and what it means to be thoughtful for you and for your discipline.